the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum, invite you to enjoy life, life with Luigi, a comedy show created by Cy Howard, directed by Mac Benoff, and starring a celebrated actor, Mr. J. Carroll Nash, with Alan Reed as Pasquale. The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum are glad to bring you Life with Luigi because they feel it's a friendly, good-natured show that offers you relaxation and enjoyment. And you know, Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum offers you relaxation and enjoyment, too. It's pleasant to chew on a smooth piece of Wrigley's Spearmint whether you're working, shopping, listening to your radio, or doing just about anything. Wrigley's Spearmint Gum tastes good, it's refreshing, and the good, easy chewing gives you comfort and satisfaction. Now, Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum brings you Luigi as he writes another letter describing his adventures in America to his Mama Basco in Italy. Dear Mamma Mia, <laughs> remember in the old country how we all thought there was gold in the streets in America? Well, it's not true. <laughs> Mamma mia, I'm here three years now, and the only goal I'm going to see is when a Pasquale is to put his teeth in a glass. <laughs> <laughs> you see, right now in America, they got what's called inflation, which has uh, got to do with a dollar. To explain to you short, to Mamma mia, inflation means money is a good, but a lamb chops is a better. <laughs> in America today, if you walk in a market with one dollar, even a potatoes is a laugh at you. <laughs> and the milk, mamma mia, about the milk. If I was to bring Uncle Pietro's goat to America, she would get so rich she could give milk only on Mondays and sleep for late for the rest of the week. <laughs> but meanwhile, I'm happy with my antique business, and, and I make just enough money to keep the wolf away from the door. Oh, oh I'm talking too quick. Here comes the wolf for now. Luigi, my friend. <laughs> Luigi, hello, hello. Hello, Pascari. Luigi, you're looking fire, beautiful. In fact, I never saw you looking so good. Pascari, something is wrong. Why? Because I say you look so good? When you grease me up like that, I know you're getting ready to put me in a pan. <laughs> no, Luigi, I really mean it. Today you look like a nice, fresh garden. Your cheeks are like two rosy apples. Your mouth is like a red cherries. Your eyes are like two black grapes. Luigi, your face it looks such a nice, fresh garden. I feel like dumping a bag of vigor over your head. <laughs> oh, Pascali, stop for you making me blush. <laughs> hey, why are, you, why are you suddenly so nice to me today, huh? Because I love you, little banana nose. <laughs> and I'm gonna love you too, Pascali. <laughs> hey, Luigi, could you take the love you got for me? And I transfer it to my nearest living relative. You mean a Russian? I don't mean ex Xavier Kugats. <laughs> Pasquale, I'm in America over three years and now all I'm going to keep here and every day is a Russia, 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 and a more Russia. I'm starting not to like it. You're right, Luigi. I'm going to change your name to Sam. <laughs> now, look, we all want something out of life, everybody. We all got our price. You tell me, what do you want out of life? And I'm going to listen. All right, Pasquale. Well, I want the peace and enough for money to eat to pay my rent to buy a few little things. In other words, Pasquale, I want everything you get free in this democratic country. That's fine. Rosa wants the same things. So why don't you two Democrats get married and have a little third party? <laughs> What do you say, little cabbage pussy? Well, uh, maybe someday, Pascali, but there's no rush. Sure, sure, there's no rush, Luigi. And uh, is there no hard feelings, huh, Pascali? No, no hard feelings, Luigi. That's a good. Now get ready to move out of the store tomorrow and leave the town for good. Leave it. Oh. I hate two-faced ungrates, Luigi. Oh. I'm going to once and for all a jackal up of your hide. <laughs> <laughs> But, 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 but what are you talking about? I'm there? talking about the biggest tax freeze ever hit of you, Luigi. Pasquale, your landlord, is getting ready to sell this whole building next week to a furniture dealer by the name of Mr. Murphy. My, 
Hey, Pasquale, you gonna sell it the antique shop? That's all right. The Murphy offered me twenty thousand dollars for this building, and I just decided to take it. Yeah, but Pasquale, if this Murphy buys the building, he's gonna throw me out. I'm gonna have no business, and I'm I'm gonna starve to death. Luigi, you see this ear I'm pointing to? Yes, sir. That's my deaf ear. Now, if you want to get a quick action of talking to the right ear, that's the one I keep for listening to future son-in-laws. Well, if I sorry, I was... Sorry, my boy, I didn't hear a word you said. Well, all right. I'm going not to my night to school, Pasquale. I'm better say goodbye to all of my friends there. So long, Pasquale. So long. And the good riddance. I'm going to teach that pup squeak once and for all. You can lead a horse at the water, but if you don't marry her, you're true with a Pasquale. No more sickness. Everything is born. Quiet class. I'll call the roll. Mr. Basco? Here. Mr. Howitt. Here. Mr. Olson. Hey. Mr. Schultz. Now stop. Everybody off. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Laugh. Everybody smile. Be happy. <laughs> Please, Mr. Schultz. Now, class, today I asked you to learn some new spelling words. So let's see how smart you are. Who will volunteer to spell the word insubordination? Well, who will volunteer? Uh, Mr. Schultz, if you're volunteering, just raise one hand, not two. Who's volunteering? I'm giving up. <laughs> oh, come now, class. Won't somebody try? Insubordination. Remember what I once told you. If a word seems too difficult, try breaking it up. That word you can't break up. You've got to smash it to pieces. <laughs> Mr. Schultz, since you insist on talking out of turn, we'll let you spell the word. All right. W-O-R-T, what? I meant insubordination. Right. I try. Insubordination. The uh, I N S U B O R T I N A T I O N. Well, that's very good, Mr. Schultz. To tell the truth, it was a lucky guess. <laughs> Don't be so modest. Uh, now, Mr. Basco. Um, huh? Uh, wake up, Mr. Basco. Spell the word receive, please. Receive? Oh, come now. What is this spelling rule involved in that word? Uh, Mr. Olson, you tell him. I would be happy to. <laughs> In such words, the general rule is I before E except after C. Now, I could give a few dozen exceptions to the rule, Miss Spalding, or uh, do you think that may confuse them? Olson, I get for shimmer just for listening to you. <laughs> Quiet, please. Uh, Mr. Basco, now that you've heard the rule, spell the word receive. All right. Emily sounds just like a poopy dog. <laughs> Mr. Schultz, Mr. Basco, you're not even trying. The correct spelling is R E C E I V E. Do you know the word now? Yeah, the, the word is mercy. <laughs> Miss Baldwin, something's wrong with Luigi. Why, what's the matter, Mr. Basco? A headache? No, no, it's a, it's a Pasquale. He's, he's going to sell a whole building with the antique shop to, to some furniture man, Mr. Mr. Murphy. Ah, Jiminy, that Pasquale is just an unmitigated 14-carat yerk. <laughs> Pasco, why is he doing this, do you know? Russia. I thought so. That Pasquale has got a real single-track mind. Yeah, and he's going to keep on having that single-track mind till he marries off his caboose. <laughs> Mr. Basco, you do have a serious problem. I wish there was some way I could help you. Ah, smile, Luigi. You got nothing to worry about. You just go into another business, that's all. Yeah, but like, like, like what, the shirts? Well, you could be a butcher. You got a nice fat tongue. <laughs> Cheer up, Luigi. Well, there's the dismissal bell. Mr. Basco, would you mind staying after class? Perhaps I can help you with your problem. All right, then. And thank you, Miss Balding. Uh, uh, good night, <laughs> Luigi. And if there's anything I can do, please call on me. Me too, Luigi. Count on me for uh, anything. Uh, thank, thanks, Austin uh, Horowitz. Uh, that's good. And any vast comes to vast, Luigi, you could always work with me in my delicatessen. Sure, you, you could stand and watch my cash register. I don't trust myself lately. <laughs> Smile, be like me. Always happy. Always laughing. <laughs> ooh, ooh, my rheumatism is killing me. <laughs> Mr. 
Mr. Basco, you should be heartened at the way your classmates were so eager to help you out. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm appreciated very much, Mr. Spalding, but, but if, for me, it, it's too big a problem. When I'm losing an antique shop, what, what am I going to do for a living? Mr. Basco, you're in America now. You can be anything you want to be and do anything you want to do. Yeah, but, but where am I going to go to find another business? Well, I've been thinking, Mr. Basco. I know a man who might be able to find you some other business. His name is Duffy Lane, and he's a business broker. Well, what am I going to need a hammer for? My business is already broke. <laughs> no, you don't understand. A business broker is a man who can offer you a large variety of businesses, and you can make your selection. Oh, well, that sounds so good, Miss Spalding. Hey, you're giving me big hope. You must learn to have more confidence in yourself, Mr. Basco. Whenever you feel discouraged, I want you to repeat to yourself these lines from a famous poem. I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. Mamma mia, I'm a feel about it already. There, you see. I'm a spotting. I'm going to see this business of broker, Mr. Lane. I'm going to find a new business. And if that's no good, I'm going to try, try, and try again. Hello, Pasquale. Yes. <laughs> hey, Pascali, I am the master of my fate. I'm the captain of my soul. Well, what do you know? Mr. Shrimp Boats, a 1950. <laughs> <laughs> you know, for a fellow who's about to lose his business and be kicked out in the street, you sound pretty happy. Well, why not, Pasquale? I'm got a big confidence in myself, Pasquale. I'm the captain of all my... All right, all right, Captain. Stop. You're getting me seasick. <laughs> Come on, Luigi. Get a sensible Mary Rosa before it's too late. Pasquale, I'm the master of my faith, not the fact. <laughs> Kathy, you want to know more here? Look at this academy. Well, let me see here. Yeah, right there. Duffy Lane, business broker, Austin, four six five five seven. That's right. I'm just had a talk with him, and he's going to find me new business. You had a talk with him, he's going to find you new business, That's eh? That's right. Like then. what? The selling the popsicles at the Eskimos? <laughs> Maybe you're going to go in the vegetable business, renting out your cabbage head to the housewives, eh? <laughs> All right, go ahead, Pascal. Make a fun, but now I'm no more afraid of you. I'm the master of my faith. I'm the captain of my soul. Well, watch out or you don't get a shipwreck. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if he's a go on a shipbuilding business. Anyway, I better put a stop to this before my little pigeon flies out of the coop. Let me see that broker's card. Hello? Hello? That's the Duffy Lane, a business broker? Hey, good. I'm a very good friend of a new customer of yours, Luigi Basco. I'm surprised that you promised him you're going to find him a new business. Well, you see, he's had ten different businesses in the last three years, always a fall apart. Why? I'm glad you asked me that. It's because of his hobby. Eh? What's his hobby? <laughs> Raising the termites. <laughs> Before we return to life with Luigi, here's a suggestion you'll find helpful during a busy day. From time to time, chew delicious Wrigley Spearmint Gum. Take a stick whenever your mouth feels dry or when you feel a bit down and you need a little lift. You'll find that lively Wrigley Spearmint flavor refreshing. And the good smooth chewing goes right along with whatever you're doing. It sort of helps you feel relaxed and satisfied. Makes your work and other activities go smoother and pleasanter. And the best part of it is, you can chew and enjoy a stick of Wrigley Spearmint Gum just about any time and any place. It's easy to carry with you. It's always handy. So remember to get some Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum next time you go to the store. That's Wrigley Spearmint. Healthful, refreshing, delicious. Now, let's turn to page two of Luigi Basco's letter to his mother in Italy. Well, Mamma Mia, I'm a candidate of good news because something bad is happening. 
I don't know why, but when I went to see my business broker, he's a push me out, to lock the door, and a spray me with the DDT. <laughs> He chased me away. He says he doesn't want to see me, but worst part of all, Mr. Murphy, the furniture manager, coming to buy this building tonight, and, and I'm going to be thrown out of here, too. Everything is look black till the Schultz is walking. Luigi, my fellow Cooper. Ah, look at that long puss. Schultz, <laughs> Pasquale, he's, he's chasing me out tonight. So what? Smile, Luigi. Remember what they say in the clothing business. Behind every gray suit, there's a silver lining. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but Schultz, well, you know how bad I'm feel about the losing the antique business? Well, well, is, is it just impossible to smile? Ah, papi, cockle. Luigi, sometimes we got to smile to keep from crying. Yeah, but sure, so what am I going to do? I'm, I'm, I'm all mixed up. Well, Luigi, the way I see it, you got two choices. One, you could borrow money for a while. No, 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 no. I'm, 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 I'm never going to borrow money. And nothing is ever going to make me borrow money. What's the number two choice? Mary Rosa. Oh, sure, sir. You know where I'm going to buy a hundred dollars? Wait, Luigi, there is a third choice. You could find yourself a job. Job? Sure. You know, that thing people do in their spare time between nine and five just to keep alive? <laughs> Wait, Luigi, into my head an idea just pooped. <laughs> well, what, what? One of my best customers, Mrs. Charlie Carr, is the wife of the personnel manager of the Etna Steel plant. I'm going to talk to Mrs. Carr right away, and in one hour, you've got to get a job. Yeah, but sure, sir, how you know Mrs. Carr is going to try? Listen, a woman's got to be nice to two men in her life, her husband and her butcher. If Mrs. Carr dares to refuse me, the next time she orders Wiener schnitzels, she gets less Wiener and more schnitzels. <laughs> What, what a big factory. At a steel plant. Oh, Americans are they very smart. Who else could have figured out how to get a big things like a steel from a little things like a plant? Well, it's no surprise. Any country that can have figured out how to push the salmon in the can without opening it up can do anything. <laughs> Mama mia, I'm, I'm, I'm getting nervous. I wish you could be with me, Mamma Mia, like, like when you was, it took me to school for the first time. Remember, Mamma? Well, well, be brave, Luigi. You're the master of your faith, the captain of your soul. Well, Mr. Basco, I'm sure we can find a place for you in our plan. Oh, thank you, thank you, Mr. Pers Pers Personnel Manager. <laughs> Here's a little present I'm brought to you from, from Mr. Schultz. Oh, thank you. Hmm, must be about 20 frankfurters in this bag. No, it's, uh, it's 18 because uh, I'm a had a lunch. Ah. <laughs> I'll just put them in my desk, one of the cold drawers. Now then, let me fill out a card for you. Uh, your name? Hello, Luigi Basco. Uh, address? 21 and not the Hollister Street. Uh, Zone? Safety. <laughs> yeah, sure, right outside of my cell is a safety zone. Oh. <laughs> well, we can fill the rest in later. Now, yes. Mr. Basco, Etna Steel would like to fit you into the job you're best suited for. Uh, now, what have you had the most experience in? Most experience I've mm -hmm. had in antiques. Well, Mr. Basco, when you're not around antiques, what do you do? I'm like to sit and read. Good, good. And what do you read about? Antiques. <laughs> Mr. Basco, the type of work we offer is arc welding, spot welding, high pressure metal plating, operating a drill press, and handling a Bessemer type foundry. Ever do any work with your hands? Oh, sure. What? In Italy, I'm a milk at the cow. <laughs> Is that all you did? Oh, no, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm also milking the goat. Oh, is, Mr. Personnel is, is, is nice in Italy. I milk the cow. I milk the goat. I'm, I'm a feed the pigs and, and take care of the little chickens. <laughs> you know, I've got a one favorite chicken. Her name is Josephine. And you're not going to believe this, but she's used to lay ten eggs in one day. Ten eggs? Yeah. Yeah, I used to sing her little song. La, 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 la. And every time she's a hearing thing, she's a drop everything. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, well, for sure, in a bigger place like this, it must have at least one cow. We have a Coke machine. <laughs> we have a Coke machine. Well, I mean, how do you squeeze the cow in that? <laughs> well, Mr. Basco, fortunately, we have a lot of war contract work, and we do need help. I'll sure. give you a note to one of our foremen. He'll put you somewhere. Oh, thank you, Mr. Cannon. Thank you so much. I'm going to plant the so much steel, you're going to be very proud uh... of me. <laughs> Out, Basco. Got to be careful around those swinging cranes. Well, maybe there's a plenty hot in here, to have Mr. Foreman. Well, what'd you expect? That Bessemer furnace over there throws three tons of white-hot coal into that burning cauldron, out of which pours thousands of tons of molten steel, and this is pressured to 5,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Think you can handle it, Basco? Please, where do you keep the cow? <laughs> what? Look, do you think you can handle that Bessemer furnace? Well, I don't know. You think I can? It's easy. Just don't get too close or it's curtains for you. Lisa, maybe you put me in a curtain apartment now. <laughs> Come here, Basco. I want to show you the next step. That red-hot steel you see over there is cooled down from 5,000 degrees to 40 below zero by the super cooling action of 500 icy drafts blowing jets of freezing air up and down. Mamma mia, that reminds me. What? I'm a forgot to defrost my icebox. <laughs> And now over here is the end product of the whole operation. We call it pig iron. Pig iron? I'm gonna know that the cows give a milk, but it's the first time I find out that the pigs give iron. <laughs> Basco, you might have to handle some of these machines pretty soon, so listen to what I tell you. Yeah, 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 sir, yes, sir. Now, this here is a four-ton jig press. Uh-huh. These here are turret lathes. Uh-huh. Those are nut and bolt forges, and that over there is a combination Clyde binder and Latina pusher. Uh-huh. Think you can learn to handle them? You sure there's no cow in the factory? <laughs> no. Now, come on with me. I'll turn you over to the superintendent. Superintendent, mamma mia, I'm going down. He's just turning me over to the janitor. <laughs> Get on the ball. Hey, Basco, move. We got to get started. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. What am I do first? Punch that time clock. Huh? You hear me? Punch the time clock. But it's a no hit to me. <laughs> I'll punch it for you. All right. Now stand over here. You're going to operate this drill press. Ever handle a press before? No, I'm never working in a tailor shop. <laughs> oh, what kind of men are they sending down these days? Look, this drill press punches 300 holes every hour, you see? You just slip this metal sheet in the press like this. Go ahead, do it. I had to push me in a shirt. Sure, sure, all right. Okay, now tighten the bolt. Yeah. Come on, stupid. Right. Now step on this button and hold tight. <laughs> all right, Fasco. Get up off that floor. All right. Now step on it. Get to work. All right, men, don't stand around and watch. Let's go. Magical <laughs> lunch whistle, Basco. Okay, boys, take 30. Uh, uh, hey, Basco, what are you doing so close to that blast furnace? What? What are you doing so close to that blast furnace? Oh, I'm just want to toss a little bit of bread. <laughs> get away from there. Okay, boys, get back on the job. Let's go. Please, I'm not even to make a little sandwich. <laughs> Mommy, I'm not can do this. I'm all mixed up. Look out, Basco! Watch out for that swinging crane! Run for it! Yeah, you're right. I'm not going to run for it, and I'm not going to stop it until I'm going to be home. Hello, Pascali. Ah, uh, is that you, Luigi? 
Face all a scratched up, overalls all torn and black, a hair standing on edge. What'd you do, stick your head in an electrical fan? That's why it's a long story. I'm, I'm had a job of making iron the pigs. Wow. First, I'm, I'm, I'm almost a cooked up. I had the furnace, then I'm a pushed into the freezer, almost a freezer to death. The noises are hitting me, and I had all the time like a thousand of hammers. I'm, I'm almost a fall in a drill, a press, and I get killed 40 times. Now I know why it's called the graveyard, the shift. <laughs> So the little pop squeak is a try to be a worker, man, eh? Tell me, my big away journey, how much money you make it today, eh? I don't know. First, uh, they take out a social security, state the tax income, a tax unemployment insurance, accident insurance, a union of those. I think I owe them a 10 cents. <laughs> Boob I'm looking at with a big stupid a green horn boob. Miss Granny, be careful of what you call me. I'm a protected by John L. Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> You're talking a very brave for a little man who's just about to be kicked out on the street. Miss Granny. Yes, Luigi. I'm gonna marry us. <laughs> I'm gonna give up. Luigi. You said it. You said the words I want to hear. <laughs> now you can be a good captain. You marry my ship. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, Luigi. I'm going to call you to the blush of the bride. Rosa! 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 You called me, Father! <laughs> yes, my little ride, Chris. Rosa, say hello to Luigi. <laughs> Hello, Rush. Well, Luigi, now you decide to be my son-in-law, you've got nothing to worry about. I'm going to make a lot of money selling this house, and you're going to live off for the profits. I'm looking for... Oh, uh, there you are, Mr. Pasquale. Oh, hello, Mr. Murphy. You coming to close the deal for the furniture store, eh? No, the deal is off, Mr. Pasquale. Off? Why? What's happened? I saw my business broker, Mr. Lane, today... And he told me someone gave him a tip over the telephone that this building is unsafe. Unsafe? That's right. It's got termites. I'm sorry, Mr. Murphy. Hey, wait, Mr. Murphy. I'm the one who called up. I'm a big liar. Mr. Murphy. Hey, Mr. Murphy. Yes, Mr. Murphy. Shine what? Hey, so you told my broker I'm a good at termites. Luigi, you heard what I told him, Murphy. I'm a big liar. Don't believe me. Luigi, where you going? You promised to marry Rosa. Don't believe me, Pasquale. I'm a big liar, too. <laughs> Friends, the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum hope you enjoyed tonight's episode of Life with Luigi, and they want to remind you that Wrigley's Spearmint Gum is a refreshing, delicious treat you can enjoy just about any time and any place. Whether you're walking, driving, working, or just sitting around at home, you can slip a stick of Wrigley's Spearmint into your mouth and enjoy some pleasant chewing. Remember, too, chewing Wrigley's Spearmint Gum freshens your taste and sweetens your breath. So it's a good idea to chew a few sticks every day, as millions of people do. Keep a package of Wrigley Spearmint handy wherever you go. That's Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum. The refreshing treat that costs so little, tastes so good, and lasts so long. The makers of Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum invite you to be sure to listen next week at this time when Luigi Basco writes another letter to his mama Basco in Italy. Life with Luigi is a Cy Howard production. Pat Burton is associate producer. The script is written by Mac Benoff and Lou Derman and directed by Mr. Benoff. J. Carol Nash is starred as Luigi Basco with Alan Reed as Pasquale, Jody Gilbert as Rosa, Mary Ship as Miss Spalding, Joe Forte as Horowitz, and Ken Peters as Olsen. The music is under the direction of Lud Gluskin. This is Charles Lyon. This is the CBS Radio Network. <laughs>